Today at Rogue Fabrication, we're gonna show you how to turn this basic flatbed into a one-of-a-kind burly workhorse automobile carrier. Before we get into the fabrication on the front of this trailer, I wanna show you guys what we've already done on the sides. These are tube steel fenders and we've skinned them in aluminum tread plate. These are to be run over by equipment and toys while loading for stuff that's over width. And also for protection, we have these 3 8 inch rub rails. They're 3 8 thick steel. They've got dot tape for visibility and pipe spools about a foot on center for additional tie down mounting and further stiffness. The whole point of all this armor on the side is mostly for loading protection to stop the trailer from becoming damaged during loading. So the next thing this trailer needs is a way to drag non-running vehicles onto it. The winch is gonna take care of that for us, but I don't want to leave my valuable winch in the front of my trailer all the time. So we've got a removable mount from Rogue Fab and of course also a hitch receiver also from Rogue Fab with tubular prep already on it. And we're going to make a bent piece to attach to the stock stop rail on this trailer. And I want it to be just inside of the edges here. So we're just going to design it for 90 degree bends to terminate at the ends. And then we're just going to bend them short to 45 and know that they will be inside of where the 90s would. 68 inches is our overall length. So our tube is 68 inches wide per our design. So we know that our overall here is 68 inches. We also know that a six inch radius takes up six inches in each direction. And from bending 101, or the sticker on the side of your machine, we know that your clamp block goes another six inches in from your bends. So 68 minus four times six equals 44 inches. That is the length of straight tubing between the clamp blocks. So when we do our layout, we're gonna lay it out from the center line and we're gonna have 22 inches to the clamp block on each side. Nice, easy, symmetrical design. Now let's figure out our cut length. Our cut length is gonna be 44 plus six for each side. And then we're going to have our bend length. Now our bend take up is super easy to calculate. We're going to actually make these at 45, like we talked about. So it's going to be 45 degrees times 0.104. That formula is on the side of every M600 bender. And there's two of those bends. And of course, we're also going to have our tails here. In bending 101, we tell you on a six inch radius that you're going to want to have three inches after each bend. Add all those numbers up you get 71.36 inches. This is a very simple design, and we can cut this tubing to any length, 71 and basically 3 eighths or longer, and we will have enough tubing to do this with 45s. And like we discussed, our 45s are gonna come down, and we're gonna end up cutting them off a little bit before they reach that full 68 inches. work with clean tube so we're rubbing it down with lacquer thinner and then we're going to mark center line first and then we're gonna go out 22 inches from center for each clamp block I'm labeling them CB1 and CB2 for clamp block one clamp block two And then, of course, arrows 
facing from outside the machine to the direction the bench starts. So that's going to help make sure I don't end up loading this material backwards. That would put the bends in the wrong place by about a foot. Now we're going to use the multiple clamp lock trick. This is going to ensure that these bends are perfectly coplanar without any additional equipment or work being required. So we just put the clamps right where they're marked and make sure the clamps themselves are coplanar by putting them on a table. And now this piece is ready to be bent to 45 degrees on each side. Now we're going to make the second bend also to 45 degrees. Now we have our piece with both bends. We can test fit this before we take the clamp blocks off. And it looks like after I trim the ends, it's going to come out to just about the right length. One nice thing is we can take these clamp blocks, leave them on, and we can put this material right back in the machine. And if we decide we want a little bit more bend angle, without recording anything, we can just add some more bend angle to it. And I think this will probably fit better with a little bit more. So we're going to bend them to 54. So I put a few more degrees of bend on that part, and now it fits a little bit tighter. I like the look of that better. Uh, conveniently, a clamp block is about the right height to cut this, so I'm just going to use it to draw a line on my part at both ends, and we'll chop it right there. This top bar came out fitting great. We're going to reinforce it to the stock square tipping with a little bit of inch and a half DOM. We chopped these in the bandsaw and now they are ready to test fit.
you can test fit with any material that's got the right radius bend already in it. This is about a 90 degree bend and looks like probably 75 would suit us better. Still allow this box to open. So we're gonna bend first and then we'll notch and trim afterward. We're swapping this inch and three quarter die out for a one and a half to do the front tubes. Bend 75 degrees as close to the end as we can. Next step is to measure our notch angle. I'm getting 40 degrees. And then for the depth into the tube, we're just gonna draw right down center line of the inch and three quarter tube. Put that line onto our inch and a half. And then this is gonna be in the center line, the coplanar I guess, with the inch and three quarter tube. So our notch is gonna be centered on the tube. So I've got the tube offset from where it would normally be, just so I can get it alongside the frame here. And I'm just drawing a line right across the top. Three cube zeroed to the box, which I'm considering to just be the trailer. And then we're gonna get this guy set as close to zero as we need it. Now this whole front bar is tacked together. I want to weld it from the other side, so we are going to break the tack welds off and then we can very easily weld everything from this side.
One other thing I like to do with our clamp blocks is use them as kind of a weld positioner. So you can just use a pin and just set them in here and they'll help rotate and pivot your work if it's got an awkward center of gravity and wants to tilt on you. We're welding this in what's called pulsed MIG. So short circuit MIG is what most of you are used to. That's where the weld wire actually touches the pool in the weld. That's what makes that spatter or frying bacon sound. What we're gonna use is pulsed MIG welding. This is similar to spray transfer, which is a, like a high voltage DC MIG welding process where the wire is actually got enough voltage going through it that it turns into plasma and just shoots directly into the weld pool as a gas instead of as a solid. It gets rid of that frying bacon sound and it welds really clean. Problem is, it only occurs above around 28 volts DC. So it'll blow through this eighth inch material in no time. So what pulsed MIG welding does is it ramps up that DC voltage into a high enough voltage to turn the wire into plasma to get a, a gas transfer, it's called spray transfer. And then it of course goes back down. It does this using a frequency of DC voltage. This keeps the heat low enough to work on eighth inch material and the voltage high enough to go into spray transfer. So you get faster travel speeds, pretty good penetration and less consumables. So from the heat from welding, we ended up with a little gap down here. I kind of thought we might, so I'm just gonna clamp it down. Threw a quick coat of paint on the bar and now comes the fun part, we get to test it out. We are super pumped with how nice this 10K flatbed turned out. We hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, subscribe to our channel. It helps us out immensely. Also, check the box next to the bell to enable notifications that allow you to be the first person back here when our next video drops. If you're gonna leave a comment and try and enter to win one of our gift cards, make sure you use the word learned in your comment. Like, I learned you guys are goofballs. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.